Stand with me if you would, please, and turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24, this evening we'll be looking at verses 1 through 8, and then Pastor has a message entitled, Covenant Relationship, Covenant Relationship, taken from Exodus chapter 24. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord thou, and Aaron, Nadab, and Ahu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people of all the words of the Lord, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord hath said will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, and rose up early in the morning, and builded an altar on, under the hill, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord hath said will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your word, and we thank you for our pastor. Now we ask that you would anoint him with the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, give him the words to speak. Give us the ears to hear and hearts to obey. And for this, we give you thanks and praise. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Frank. Exodus chapter 24, and I'm going to do my best to get through the entirety of the chapter tonight. Uh, that is a little bit of a tall order because I have kind of a time frame that I am hoping uh, we can get to the radio business meeting to. I want to be respectful of your time tonight. So as we look at the wilderness wanderings, we have, uh, we have reached Mount Sinai. The last couple of weeks, we looked at the Ten Commandments, the boundaries, and that the blessings that the boundaries provide. And that the boundaries are not uh, are not. God's way of keeping us down, they are God's way of allowing us the liberty to enjoy the life that he has desires for us. And so it's not about the rules, but it's about fostering that relationship. And once we reach Exodus chapter 20 or Exodus 24, what we find is we have we find that Israel has reached that point of decision. Uh, the point of decision whether or not they would enter into this covenant relationship with God. You see, Israel was to be God's covenant people, his special nation, his chosen nation. It's important for us to understand what a covenant is. I wish I could go into a little more with this tonight. Maybe we will on a Wednesday or another Sunday. Or maybe it would just be a wonderful thing for you to do as part of a personal Bible study. But basically, a covenant is a pledge that helps to define a relationship. A a pledge that helps to define a, a relationship. And so even as we consider that, I think it's important for us to understand that we as the church also have a covenant relationship with the Lord. Our covenant relationship is through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's called the new covenant, the better covenant. And as we talk about these things, I do want to pause as well and make sure we all understand that the church is not Israel. They are not the same. That the church does not replace Israel. That is not what happens either. The two are separate. And it is very dangerous to confuse or to conflate the two together. So we're going to look tonight at this chapter. And what I want for us to see is I want us to see the ratification of this covenant between God and Israel. And to see the beauty of a covenant relationship with Almighty God. So let's look at some of these aspects of the covenant and how it was ratified. We're going to look beginning in verse number 1. There the Bible says, And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron and Adab and Abihu and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. 
And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill. And twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Jump with me to verse number 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord hath said we will do do. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made concerning these words. So we consider tonight this covenant and what makes up this covenant and the blessings of this covenant. I want you to see first the book. Very simply, see the book. As we look at Exodus 24, we cannot miss the emphasis that is placed on the book. Verse number 3 talks about the words which the Lord hath said. Verse number 4 talks about Moses writing all the words of the Lord. Verse number 7 talks about Moses taking the book of the covenant. Here's the thing. The covenant helps to define the relationship. You cannot have a relationship with God without the book. You can't have a relationship with God without His Word. You notice what they said. They said in regards to the Word of the Lord, all that the Lord has said will we do. You see, here's the reality when it comes to the covenant relationship and entering into this covenant. We either come God's way or we don't come at all. We don't come to God our own way. We don't, we don't make it work. It's not what works for us. It's not my truth. It's not your truth. It's God's truth. You don't come to God your way. We know the verse. What did Jesus say in John 14? He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's, it, it's not through a church. It's not through baptism. It's not through ritual. It's not through right. It, it's not through good works. It's through the Lord Jesus. And where do we find that? We find that in the book. You see, the thing about the book is God has not left us wondering what he says. God has not left us wondering about his way. God has not left us wondering what to expect. You know, the Bible clearly teaches that God has inspired, meaning he literally breathed out his word. 2 Timothy 3 and verse number 16, the Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration. It is breathed out by God. All Scripture, that word Scripture there is graphe, meaning writings. Uh, the writings are breathed out by God. What makes up the writings? Words make up those writings. See, the Scriptures are God-breathed. And then the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, moved men to record His Word. 2 Peter 1 and verse number 21 says, says this, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved, born along by the Holy Ghost. When the Bible says in Exodus chapter 24 and verse number 4 that Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, do you know what it means? It means that Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. There would be many who would stand behind a pulpit and deny that, but God said it, so I believe it. God has inspired, breathed out his word. God used the Holy Spirit to move men to record his word. The Bible is clear that God has preserved his pure, eternal word. I'm going to tell you, we have no relationship with God unless we are willing to humble ourselves and to hear and to heed His Word. The book. The book, you see, essential to our covenant relationship with the Lord tonight is the book. Is the book. Israel's responsibility was simple. It was to listen, to trust, and to obey. Their responsibility was so very simple. To listen. To trust. And to obey. By the way, that's our responsibility too. To listen. To trust. And to obey. You see, living for God is not always easy, is it? But if you stop and think about it for more than two seconds, it's usually not overly complicated. Because God has given us the book. The book. And you think about 
our opportunity in this, the new covenant, in this, the better covenant. You and I, you think about Israel. Israel didn't have the whole Bible. Israel had next to nothing. You think about the people in the nation of Israel. Individuals didn't even have their own Bible. You probably have seven or eight. And if you looked in the nooks and crannies of your bookshelves and your cars, you'd probably end up with 10 to 12. We have the book. And so what do we do? 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Praise God for the book tonight. Amen. Praise God for the book tonight. The Bible reveals his way, and then the Bible makes us blessable. Praise God for the book. But as we consider the covenant relationship, yes, we see a book, but we also see something else. Look with me. We're going to jump to, uh, we'll start in verse number four, Don. The Bible says, And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill. And twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half the blood and put it in basins. And half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And look at verse number 8. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning these words. You see, as we consider a covenant relationship, yes, we see the book. But church, we also see the blood. We also see the blood. You see, you can't read Exodus 24 and miss the emphasis that is placed on the blood. You cannot, hear me, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot have a covenant relationship without the blood. The blood is that thing which sealed the covenant. And you know, this is where we can really get into delineating how our covenant is different from Israel's. Because our covenant is not based on the blood of bulls and of goats. Our covenant is based on the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And here's the thing, you cannot have a relationship with God without the blood of Jesus. If if the book reveals the way, the blood opens the way. The blood of Jesus changed everything. We have redemption through the blood of Jesus. Colossians 1 in verse number 14 says this. Colossians 1, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. In other words, that blood was that purchase price that bought us back from the slave market of sin. In his blood we have redemption. We not only have redemption through his blood, we have reconciliation through the blood of Jesus. Colossians 1 and verse number 20, as well as other verses in Ephesians and Galatians. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, that I say, whether they be things in heaven or things in earth. The Bible also talks about in Ephesians how how, how he is our peace who hath made two, meaning Jews and Gentiles, one. In other words, we not only have redemption through the blood of Jesus, we have reconciliation. He's not just purchased us, he's provided us peace. Peace that man can have with God. Peace that man can have with man. What is it? It's by the blood of Jesus Christ. We can have cleansing through the blood of Jesus. 1 John 1 and verse number 7, the Bible says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all our sin. Revelation 1 and verse number 5, I love this. It says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins. In his own blood. We have access through the blood. 
Hebrews 10, beginning in verse number 19. Now the God of peace that brought us again from the dead, oh, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Notice what he said. I make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Don, if you would, put up Hebrews 10, beginning in verse number 19 for me. I want us to see that one as well. Hebrews 10, beginning in verse number 19. He'll get that one up on the screen for us. We've we got to take some time and look at the blood of Jesus. Amen. We've got to take some time and look at the blood of Jesus. Having thereunto, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Verse number 20. Look at verse number 20. Oh, I tricked you, Don. We're going to keep going. We're just going to keep looking at the Bible. <laughs> Hebrews 10 and verse number 20. We could have a sword drill. See who could beat Don. By the new and living way. This is our access. It's by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say... His flesh. In other words, my access is only by the blood. Only by the blood. Church, hear me. As we talk about a covenant relationship, there, there is no covenant relationship without the book. There is no covenant relationship without the blood. The blood of Jesus changes everything. The blood of bulls and goats covered the blood of Jesus washes away. The blood of bulls and goats allowed one man one time a year to enter into the presence of God. The blood of Jesus allows every child of God to enter the presence of God at any time. If the book reveals the way, the blood opens the way. The blood makes us blessable. We see the book. We see the blood. But finally, tonight, the rest of this chapter, it lays out for us the blessing. I want you to see what happens next. The Bible says, beginning in verse number 9, Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw God, and did eat and drink. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up unto me into the mountain, and be there, and I will give unto thee taste. Tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the, and he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us until we come again. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. And if any man have a matter to do, let him come unto them. By the way, remember that verse. That's going to be problematic in a week or two. Um, but we'll keep going. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. And a cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And, and the sight of the glory, and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights. And I wish I had time. To do this justice, to really stop and to take our time and delineate out the blessings that we see in verses 9 through 18. By the way, I will tell you, uh, why, why just certain? I, I think it's because Israel chose not to draw near unto the Lord. You remember Exodus 20, beginning in verse number 18, when God spoke to the nation, when the people saw and heard God, what did they do? When the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Verse number 19, uh, they, uh, and they said unto Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, fear not, for God has come to prove you that, it, that his fear may before your faces that you sin not. And the people stood afar off. You see, the people had chosen, the people had decided that they were content to live at the lowest level. I don't believe this was the Lord excluding them. They chose to stand far off. And I think it's sad they settled because they missed so much. I'm going to tell you, the higher you go, 
the greater the blessing. But also we see here, the higher you go, the fewer that go with you. Moses went the last stretch alone. But what is the blessing here? Verse number 10, they saw God's greatness. Again, I wish I had time to to lay this out in more detail. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. I'm going to tell you, to see the greatness of God will change you. To see the greatness of God will change you. But you see, what happens is when you enter into a relationship with God by the book and by the blood, I'm going to tell you, you can begin to see the greatness of God. It will change you. I'm going to tell you, it's not an accident that our society works so hard to dumb down God. It's not an accident that God's the butt of every joke. That in the cartoons, he's this dumb, blumbering character that, 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 that makes all these mistakes. And, or, or he's angry and vengeful and far off. He's moody. and It's not an example that, or it's not an accident that our society dumbs down God. Because there's something about seeing God in his greatness that will shake you and will stir you. What a blessing to be in a relationship with such a great God. To see him high and lifted up. I think of Isaiah, when he saw the greatness of the Lord, what happened? It shook him, but it also stirred him. Here am I, send me. Oh, what's the blessing here? They saw the greatness of God. What's the blessing here? They experienced the grace of God. Did you catch it in verse number 11? And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. In other words, God allowed them to see some aspect of his glory, and God didn't strike him dead. These men were sinners. Yet they were allowed in the presence of the sovereign holy king. In a couple chapters, these men would lead the nation into idolatry. If I were God, it's a good thing I'm not. Thank you, Edgar. If I were God and I knew what was coming, I'd probably just save myself some trouble. And yet, though these men would lead the nation into idolatry in just a few chapters, here as they experienced this covenant relationship, they were allowed into the presence of the sovereign, holy king. They did not deserve to be in God's presence, and yet they were allowed to be. And I think in my own life, How little I deserve to be able to be in God's presence. And yet because of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am allowed in the holy of holies. To come before the very mercy seat of God. Oh, they saw God's greatness. They experienced God's grace. And Moses, Moses saw God's glory. You look at verses 15 through 18. And Moses went up and a cloud covered the mountain. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. This is that Shekinah glory. That, 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 that glory of God that, that, that takes place when his presence is there. And it abode uh, six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain. In the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud. You think about that, that that which appeared to be a devouring fire to the people below. Moses walked right into that, up on top of the mountain. He saw God's glory. You know, I think how wonderful it will be when we see him in his glory. One day Jesus is coming again in glory. He said in Matthew 25 and verse number 31, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And you read some of the descriptions from the book of Revelation about what God has in store when the Son is revealed. When the Son is revealed as the sovereign King of kings and Lord of lords. I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a grand sight. It's going to be a glorious thing, church. There is even that aspect 
where we who know that covenant relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, where we will not just see His glory, we will experience some aspects of that glory ourselves. Colossians 3 and verse number 4, and I don't understand all of this. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 4. When Christ shall, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse number 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Somebody explain that to me. How I can be a joint heir with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be what? That we may also be glorified together. He says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. The glory that shall be revealed in him? No, the glory that shall be revealed in us. 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. I wish I had another two hours to talk about the covenant and talk about the relationship but I want you to see tonight this relationship that we have with God it is a special relationship Israel had a special relationship but folks we have a special relationship with God the book the blood the blessing the book the blood the blessing I have two questions for us tonight as we close number one Do you personally have this relationship with God? If not, I want to to implore you. Take care of that before you leave. Do you have this relationship with God? And number two, those of us who are in that covenant relationship, are we living in full appreciation Of what that relationship is. And what made that relationship possible.